Hello, and welcome to our presentation today. My name is David Pixton, and I work as a faculty member in the Harold B. Lee Library at Brigham Young University. Jordan Ellsworth, a graduate student in instructional psychology and technology, and the leader of this project, will be presenting along with me. We will be sharing with you some of our recent work with augmented reality, and we'll discuss how we are applying this tool to improve science education. I hope that the, the next few minutes that we share with you today will be both enjoyable and informative to you. Now to give you some background, our project started a couple of years ago with an effort to revitalize a 50-year-old globe exhibit that was located in the science and engineering section of our library. Two students suggested that we could display a variety of virtual objects on the globe using augmented reality technology, which is often referred to as simply AR. Now, as we considered this proposal, we realized that this opened up many opportunities for teaching about our Earth, its structure, history, and peoples in a highly engaging way. Most importantly, it could offer students in a wide range of disciplines a platform for experiential learning including co-creation of course content. Now this uh, platform could also offer a laboratory of sorts for other faculty members, enabling them to explore the merits of using augmented reality in their teaching. So to give us a better understanding of the potential educational value of using augmented reality in this setting, we decided to build a few pilot applications and test them with college students and faculty. As part of his master's degree program, Jordan and a couple of his student assistants created our first complete AR experience. To guide his design efforts, we set a couple of design goals. The first was to help learners engage with an unseen part of the Earth's anatomy, which is the Earth's magnetosphere. The magnetosphere was carefully chosen for this pilot test because for most learners it is a very abstract concept and therefore we could leverage some of the key affordances of AR. And we will talk about uh, this a little bit more later. Now this leads us to the second design goal which was to create a quality educational experience that would model the strengths of AR with respect to science education. In order to meet these design goals, we sought first to identify and understand the key learners that would try the AR experience. With this understanding, we then could design the experience to meet their specific needs. Now, borrowing from uh, principles of design thinking from the software industry, we developed three different target personas to help us understand our users. The curious freshman persona captures the demographic of younger students that are motivated to try new technologies out of curiosity. This persona is also motivated by peer encouragement from friends. On the other hand, the struggling with physics persona is more interested in trying the AR experience in the hope that it will help him better comprehend abstract concepts that are perhaps part of the class that he is taking. Finally, uh, the interested professor persona represents uh, our other targeted audience segment, namely uh, faculty members who have limited experiences with AR, but who are open to trying new methods for improving the effectiveness of their teaching. I'm now going to turn the time to Jordan, who will describe in more detail how he went about designing the AR experience for these audiences. Once we understood the design objectives, constraints, and target audience, we began brainstorming possible content to teach. We found Stefan and his team's research on the affordances of virtual and augmented reality technologies to be especially insightful in this step of the process. The affordances they identified highlight some of the strengths of the technology, which helped us to determine what kind of content might be best taught so as to benefit from these affordances. For example, we, we utilized AR's affordance of enhancing the physical world to depict the true three-dimensional nature of the Earth's otherwise invisible magnetic field. 
We also added additional information that does not exist in the physical world, such as the centerline axis of the Earth, which can be seen on this slide. We did this to assist in visualization and comprehension. AR also allows visualizing an alternate reality that would be were the magnetosphere absent. This can be seen by the or orange shadow covering the Earth on this slide. This exploits AR's ability to ignore space-time linearity. Additionally, though it is possible to see visible evidence of the magnetosphere, an observer would need to travel far north to see this. We used AR to help users experience Aurora Borealis, regardless of their location, capitalizing on AR's ability to recreate aspects of the physical world in a location convenient to the user. Once we had established the content we wanted to teach in order to showcase the affordances provided by the technology, we set out to structure the content. We settled on a cognitive task analysis approach to organizing the learning experience. In doing so, we looked to the experts in the field, mainly NASA scientists, through videos and publications to be able to understand their approach and thought process when seeking to understand the Earth's magnetosphere. This study of experts' understanding of the content allowed us to construct the graphic on the right, which provides a simplified sequential structure for conveying this information. In addition to this structure, we wanted to take advantage of the interactive capabilities of AR through embodied cognition. Embodied cognition maintains that bodily movement, when integrated with strategically into learning tasks, improves learning. We use this approach to create and integrate activities in the app that require the user to lift their arm and push a button, or allow them to walk freely around the exhibit. We believe that these movements will help solidify the information provided and provide a more memorable circumstance for learning. In designing our AR experience, we found rapid prototyping to be a useful method of instructional design. We were able to quickly draft low-fidelity prototypes and test them, increasing the fidelity at each iteration. It was a very helpful design strategy as it allowed weaknesses to be identified early in the design process through valuable feedback from users. For example, we asked some students to test a medium-fidelity version of our prototype and provide feedback. They suggested that we be clearer about the controls, create a more engaging introduction, and that we include more interactivity. From their feedback, we learned that Interactivity usually increases engagement and should be implemented as often as feasible, especially on the parts of the lesson that are at the core of the learning objectives. We also learned that the communication of interactive controls should be clear and intuitive so that they do not detract from the learning objectives. Finally, we learned that what the students see in the first few seconds influences their attitude toward the experience in large measure. After receiving this feedback and using, as, using it as a lens which would help us to evaluate early prototypes, we were able to focus our efforts in the design of the next iteration on the things that added the most value to the experience. By prototyping and testing often, designers and teachers can avoid ineffective or impractical designs for educational AR experiences. We are currently testing our latest prototype with students on campus to learn about their experience with the app and receive feedback on improvements that could be made. The following video highlights some of the features of that app we developed. It's a prototype, but it provides context to some of the things we've discussed and may allow you to imagine what this and other educational AR experiences might be like.
It is easy to speculate on how AR educational experiences should be developed and experienced, but designing and developing such an experience brings understanding of the drawbacks and advantages. One challenge we noted in developing the prototype was a lack of documentation on and functionality of the head mounted display AR software. All such devices on the market are immature consumer devices, so many 3D assets either do not show in the headset or require alterations in the code to get them to appear. Also, only one user can use the headset at a time, so class interaction is difficult unless more headsets are purchased. However, at $2,300 each, multiple headsets are far from affordable for many. In summary, an AR learning app can be a valuable way for students to learn about certain topics. It can be time consuming and require a high amount of effort and planning, but provides affordances not offered by any other medium. In designing such experiences, great care should be taken in considering the audience and the constraints, including time and budget, content, instructional design, and practical implementation. The content especially should be analyzed to determine that an AR experience will provide perception, insight, and engagement unattainable through other methods. By employing these design practices, an engaging experience can result that fortifies understanding and forms mental connections not easily forgotten. Now, as Jordan mentioned, we are presently in the process of gathering user feedback from those who have taken part in the Magnetosphere AR experience. In doing so, we're trying to learn how users feel regarding the value that this technology provides in assisting teaching and learning. We see the work that we've uh, accomplished so far as a good start, but only a start. Certainly, there are many more opportunities for using the GLOBE uh, platform to assess the effectiveness of teaching with AR in various ways. So some ideas for future content are shown on this slide. Of particular interest to us is the learning experience that students have when they are engaged in actually building the, the AR content. Now this is a rapidly changing technology where equipment is becoming more capable, uh, content creation is becoming easier, and price barriers to entry are dropping. We believe that all of these changes will make AR more user-friendly for education, but the key to successfully plan implementing it will still be in finding those applications that best take advantage of the unique affordances of this technology. One final note, uh, there are two basic hardware devices that can be used with AR. One is a headset-based system, and the second is a phone-based system. We have chosen the first of these two because of its immersive quality, but the phone-based system uh, does offer some interesting benefits, including perhaps increasing access to more users. Uh, more work is needed to understand the practical benefits of each of these device platforms in this educational environment. So that's it for now. Uh, thank you for your interest in our work. We hope uh, that this has been meaningful to you. We recognize that several others have contributed to the work presented here and offer our hearty thanks to these contributors, especially those listed on this slide. Please feel free also to contact us at the email address below. We'd love to hear your insights or any other feedback you may have. Many thanks.